In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of uploading an image or other binary data to Firebase Cloud Storage, and then we're going to save the metadata to Firebase Cloud Firestore. So specifically in this video, we're going to add a photo data class, and we're going to save the photo data class to Cloud Firestore. This is just the metadata of the photo, not the image itself. Let's start by navigating to our project in Android Studio and go to the DTO directory. Right-click, choose New, Kotlin File Class, and we're going to call this one Photo. And we'll call it a class. And we're going to make this a simple data class. So we'll say Data, Class Photo. And we know in Kotlin we can define a data class in essentially one line by just putting all of the parameters up in the constructor. So let's start by saying var local URI which is where we're storing this locally, and we'll make that a string and give it a default value of empty string. Now, one question here, why a string? Why not a URI data type? There is a URI class that's available to us. Well, string is easier to store in JSON format. So the idea with this photo class is it's something we're going to save to Firebase. So let's keep it as a string. Now, we also want to know what the remote URI is, or in other words, where this is stored remotely. So we'll say var remote URI colon string. And again, we'll give it a default value of empty string. Let's save our description. And we'll say string equals empty string again. I'll give us a little room here so we can see the whole thing. After description, let's say var date taken of type date. And we'll go ahead and just initialize this to a new date, whatever the current date is. Now it does need us to import it. So there we go, java.util and that does it for our photo class. Most of the rest of our work is going to occur in the main fragment and the main view model, so I went ahead and went into distraction-free mode. So main fragment, I'm going to declare a new variable up on the top, private var photos colon array list photo. So notice an array list, but the generic type there is, is photo, which is that data class that we just created. Equals new array list photo. Now I do want to make this one a var, which means we can change the assignment later on, not a val, which means it's constant. Because every time I start a new specimen, I'm going to essentially clear out this photos collection and start anew. Let's go ahead and add our photo and forgive me for being a Java programmer and putting in new, which we don't need. So at this point, it compiles no problem. Now, when do we want to populate our photos in our photo array? Well, remember that when we toggle the camera, we hear back on the on activity result. And here's our save image request code. At the moment, we just say, OK, we save the image. We put that in a toast notification. But nonetheless, we know if we're here, where my cursor is right now, that the user did choose OK on the camera and that we believe we've successfully taken a photo. So this is a good place to create that new photo object. Now, a couple things though. First of all, one weird thing about saving a photo is we specify the path to save the photo, not in the on activity result, but at the point where we take the photo right above here. So this photo URI is where the photo is located on our SD card. But you notice that we've also declared it locally with val. So it's only alive during the place I have highlighted here. In other words, it's only alive within the scope. Let's give it a bit grander scope. We'll say, We'll delete the declaration down here. Let's go up to the top again. And we'll say private var photo URI. And this is of type URI. And we'll put the question mark, which means it can be nullable. Let's go ahead and import that. And we'll initialize it to null, which means we're probably going to want to do a null check if we actually use this. But on the other hand, it's pretty safe to assume in this case that it has been populated because it has to be populated on the take photo function. And the take photo function is what toggles the camera. Notice when it toggles the camera, it passes in the save, it, save image request code. When we hear back from the camera, we hear back an on activity result. If the user chose OK and not cancel or back, then this passes. And then we know that we're hearing back from the camera because we see once again that same fingerprint, save image request code. So these two things marry up together. One programming note, I realized later in this video that when I went to run this, I had a little problem that was introduced in a previous video. I'm just going to fix it right now. When we call the camera, we need to pass it a URI, which is parcelable. We can't pass it a file. So I'm just going to change this line right here from photo file to photo URI. That's going to help us run this in the future. Anyway, back to where we were. Okay, now we can create our photo. 
So we'll say var photo equals photo. Now here's a cool thing about Kotlin. You notice when I start this photo constructor, it shows me each of the different parameters that I can pass in. Because I've given several of these defaults, I don't need to pass in every single parameter. But even better than that, there's another Kotlin trick that I can use. When I'm passing in parameters, I can label them and tell them which they match up to. So in other words, I can say local URI equals and then photo URI, just like so. So if I don't wanna pass in every one of these parameters, I simply pass in the ones I want and I give a label to those that I want. Now, photo URI, actually I need to do one more step. Uh, because we are saving this as a string, I'm simply gonna convert it to two string, uh, just like so. And you see that everything compiles, we're in good shape. We know at the moment the remote URI is initialized to empty string, description is initialized to empty string, and date is initialized to the current date and time. Now that we have a, a completely populated photo object, let's add it to our collection of photos, which we declared above. So photos.add photo, just like so. Okay, now we have created and populated the photo. Let's go up to our save function. And now we're going to save the specimen, but we're going to pass the photo as well, or rather the collection of photos as well. Now this red lines because my current save function doesn't accept photos. It only takes one parameter and that is specimen. So let's see if it can help us out. I'm going to hold Alt and press Enter. Note, if you look at the top, I'm currently on main fragment, but watch what happens in just a moment. I'm going to say add parameter to function save. And now I can control click into save and take a look, this save function that I had before that only accepted a specimen, now it accepts two objects, a specimen and a photo. Look at the top and you notice that we've moved from the fragment to the view model. And the view model is where we're going to do our heavy lifting to save this photo data. Now this is going to be a two-step process because we have to save our specimen object first before we can associate the collection of photos to that specimen object. So think about where we will be when we know for sure that the specimen has saved. The on success listener. If we reach this on success listener on our save method, then we know that we've successfully saved the specimen. So next we can save the photo. So let's say if photos is not equal to null and photos.size is greater than zero because we only want to save the photos if we have photos and they're not null. Let's make a brand new method called save, uh, let's say save photos and we'll pass in our specimen object which will be for some metadata, and then our photos objects as well, or our photos collection, which we can iterate over and save those photos. Now this function redlines because it doesn't exist. So let's choose Alt Enter and then choose Create Function. That all looks good. Now we need to walk a path here from our collection of specimens to the individual specimen that we just saved, which is why we pass that specimen object to our save photos object in the first place. From there, we need to create a new collection of photos, and then we need to store individual photo objects. So we start with the Firestore reference, just as we have on our save function up above where we have Firestore, collection, specimens, and then document. So from there, let's say collection, and then specimens, and then dot document. Now note we're going to make one difference. Up here we're creating a new document so we don't pass anything as a parameter. Down here we want to update an existing document. So we'll say specimen dot specimen ID, where that specimen ID is this generated value here. And you might recall that we're storing that, we get that generated value right here and then we're storing it into our specimen object here. So if you put two and two together, that's just that Firebase generated ID. Now from there, we're going to say collection and we, we're going to make a new collection called photos. Now this is running off the edge a little bit, which is going to make it hard to visualize and hard to debug. So let me go ahead and break this off into a few different lines. Okay, so at this point, we've walked all the way down to the photos collection that's going to hang off of an individual specimen object. Let's save that into a variable called val collection. Easy as that, just like so. Now, let's iterate over our photos. So we'll say photos dot for each, and we know there's this handy construction in Kotlin where we can do a for each loop on a collection just like this. So we're iterating over each photo, and each time we're shaking hands with an individual photo, it's going to get stored into the parameter IT. So, okay, easy from here. We simply say collection dot add, and then IT, and that will store our photo. 
Now how do we know if the photo was stored successfully? Well this is going to return a task object. So we can say val task equals collection dot add it and then we can say task dot add on success listener and once again using Kotlin we can use a kind of inline construction just like so and we can say it dot id and that is the photo ID that is generated. But oh, wait a minute, something gets really confusing right here. You notice that we have essentially uh, kind of like a lambda going on here, and then we have another lambda going on here. And we know there's a Kotlin shortcut where if there's one argument passed to a lambda, we refer to it as IT. The trick is we have a lambda within a lambda, so this gets really hard to read. So let me do this upper lambda in a longer function where I'm actually going to specify the variable name that I want to use for an individual photo. I'm going to say I don't want to use IT. Instead, let's call it photo. Photo, and then we use the uh, lambda separator like so, and you see I can no longer use IT because I've named the incoming parameter to photo. So I change this to photo, just like so. Same behavior as before, it's just a little more crisp and clear because now we see that the iteration variable, in other words, the photo we're currently shaking hands with is called photo instead of being called IT. But now within the second lambda, we see that the document reference passed in, that's called IT and it's a little bit more clear. So we can do a little update here. We can say photo.id equals IT.id. So this ID here is the Firebase generated ID for this photo document. And you know what, in hindsight, I didn't account for that in my photo DTO, but no problem, we can go ahead and do that now. So let's go to our one line constructor. And let's say after date, we're going to say ID colon string equals empty string, just like so. Go ahead and give that the var type, just like so, and save. And back to our view model where we were just working and we see that now this compiles. So now we're saving the photo metadata. We're getting back from, from Firebase a unique identifier to that photo metadata. And then we're updating our local object in memory with that metadata. One more piece of housekeeping I wanna do and that is let's go to our fragment and let's take a look at that save function. After we have saved, let's go ahead and clear out our specimens. So we'll say specimen equals uh, specimen, just like so. And then we'll say photos equals array list photo, uh, just like so. So after we save, we're clearing out our local memory so we can create and save a brand new object. Let's see how this works. I've set numerous breakpoints through the app. Let's start by selecting a plant. We'll say cornelian cherry, and we'll say beautiful flowers. We'll take a couple of photos. Okay, confirm we're hearing back from the camera here. So we get our image saved. And we're creating our photo object with our local URI and we're adding that to the collection. Let's do that one more time with another photo. Once again, walking through those same steps, uh, we're comfortable with how this works. So as a matter of fact, you see photo size equals one. If I choose F8 one more time, uh, it will add our second photo to our collection. So I'll go ahead and choose F9 and I'll take up that breakpoint since, since we've seen that work a few times. Now let's choose save. Now save's going to be interesting. So we start by populating our specimen just as we've done before. Now let's take a look. We have a populated specimen and we can see our cornelian cherry. Now let's take a look at our photos as well. And as I expected, we have two photos in here, uh, both with a local URI set and a current date set, but nothing else set on those. Let's choose F7, step in and see how this happens. So first of all, we go through and we save our specimen data, that JSON specimen data up to Firebase. We get back the document ID. So let's see what that document ID is. Remember just a few letters or numbers here. I'm going to remember 99 MJ. MJ. We'll think like 99 Michael Jackson, something like that. Now, uh, on success, when we've heard back from this, we get to our on success listener and it says, okay, we've successfully saved that. Now let's save our photo metadata. So let's have seven into this. So here we start with our specimen collection, and then we go to what? Our specimen ID, which is 99MJ. Remember 99 Michael Jackson, just how it happened to come up and the way I can remember it. Now we're saying let's add a new collection to this specimen. And for each of the photos, we're going, let me set another breakpoint here so we can watch our photos. 
So we'll choose F9. And for each of the photos now, we're going to add the photo to that collection. And when we've heard back from the photo, we're going to get the photo ID. We'll choose F9 and F9. And you see, okay, it looks like our photo saved well because we're getting back an ID that represents the photo. Now for the photo, we get a document ID as well. And remember the specimen owns the photo. So this is a document ID that is unique to the specimen and specifically the photo within the specimen. So QBQN, remember that if you will. And we had two photos, so we get another ID here. And this ID, 1UDS, so remember that one. And I choose F9 and that effectively finishes up that save. Let's check things out in Firebase. I'll go to Firebase and watch this happen. We have our specimens collection, then 99 Michael Jackson here. We click on that and we take a look. We have our Gordon Glory Cornelian Cherry Dogwood. Beautiful flowers. We have a latitude and a longitude and a plant ID. All of this we put together earlier. But look at this. We have something new here. Now we have a new collection called Photos. And watch what happens when I click on Photos. We see a couple of familiar friends, 1UDS and QBQN. I click on 1UDS and we can see we have the date taken for this photo and the local URI for this photo. I click on the other one, we see a date taken and a local URI. Now we don't have a remote URI yet because we're going to cover that in our next video where we actually upload our photo to something that can hold binary files, which will be cloud storage for us, but it could be anything that will upload a photo and give us back a unique uh, URI, something like Dropbox or mega.co.nz or Firebase uh, cloud storage. Any of those will work. We'll cover that in our, next photo, in our next video. But just witness with me here that we've gone through this whole sequence of specimens collection to a specific specimen, to photos collection, to a specific photo. And indeed that matches up to our Firebase Cloud Firestore, which has a collection of specimens, then individual specimen documents, which own a collection of photos, which own individual photo documents. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.